you could probably use a vacuum chamber. It comes in handy for like stabilizing wood, degassing silicone or plaster, making funny looking marshmallows, tormenting Stretch Armstrong, whatever. There are a lot of DIY options on YouTube where you can build one, but from what I can tell, they're either very complicated or they require sourcing a bunch of parts or they don't pull a great vacuum, or they leak, or they're crazy dangerous. But really, most of them would probably work for most shop purposes, but none of them seem particularly easy enough. So I came up with one that I can build uh, with very few steps from very few pieces that you can acquire very easily. Amazon links below, but you can probably find all the stuff at Harbor Freight, or just about all of it. It's not the ideal setup, it's not the cheapest setup, but it is probably the easiest to build. I'll modify in the future and make it much more ideal, but let's let's get the bare bones going and get it uh, sucking first. That sounded not as good as I hoped. So here's what you need. One pot, make sure it's pretty sturdy. This is a pressure cooker that my mom bought me when I moved out of the house many years ago. I have never once used it until today. Pressure cookers are pretty thick walls. You know, there are a lot of other pots you can use like the, the inside of an Instant Pot, the new cookware your wife just got, that she's not guarding particularly well. Whatever, I won't judge, just make sure in the nice thick walls, pretty beefy stuff. Next up, half inch thick, one foot by one foot sheet of polycarbonate. I got this on Amazon. Don't use acrylic, don't use plexiglass, unless you like shattering things. I thought I ordered a one foot by one foot sheet. I actually ordered a one foot by two foot sheet. So, now I have two of them. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other one, but Leave me an idea below in the comments, I suppose. Next up, a sheet of silicone rubber. This is one foot square, eighth of an inch thick. I also got this pretty cheap on Amazon. Stupid, stupid bag. The silicone is, is high temperature. It's pretty high temperature stuff. You don't really need high temperature for this, but I bought like multiple of these because I want to do like some high temperature stuff in the future. It'll work for this, don't worry. Next up, set of gauges. I think these are from Harbor Freight. I got them more than 10 years ago, and I never opened the box. They're just Freon gauges. I put the hoses and stuff, all the bits together, as per the instructions, no modifications needed. Lastly, one vacuum pump. This thing's heavy. I'm gonna put it back over here. And it's big, and it's ugly. These aren't cheap. Vacuum pumps aren't cheap. Unless you work at a place that used to do air conditioner and refrigerant work, and they don't want a super old pump just kicking around anymore. That being said, you can get them at Harbor Freight, you can get them on Amazon. They're not rare. This old one, I changed the oil. The oil was disgusting in there. Put in new vacuum oil, I made sure it works. I can't really give you details because the sticker's all scratched up, but I think it's five CFM, five cubic feet per minute, and it's capable of pulling a crazy strong vacuum. You can let it run for hours and hours, uh, but it is most likely completely worn out. And last rare thing that I didn't have is a tap. This one's M14 by 1.5, it's not that rare. It's common enough, they had it on the shelf at my tiny local Ace Hardware branch. Uh, but don't just order this one. I want you to make sure you get the right one. We'll talk about why in a minute. And that's it, no pile of pipe fittings, no extra valves or gauges. I'll show you exactly why you don't need all those uh, when I get the thing built and working. So here's how to build it. Step one, take the silicone sheet, mark out the size of your pot. I checked a bunch of different size pots, marked out the inner diameter, give or take, of the smallest pot I would be borrowing from the kitchen. Turned out to be the pressure cooker. With this design, I can stick the lid on any number of pots, depending on the size of thing I need. Cut that hole out of silicone with like a razor or a hobby knife. Super easy. To keep it from flopping around while it's working, I glued the silicone to the polycarbonate sheet. Not well, and it'll probably fall off, but it doesn't need to be glued. It doesn't. I just didn't want to flop it around. Eventually, I'll probably just tape it all together. Spray adhesive may have been better, but guess who forgot to go get any of that? Maybe contact cement, I don't know. Next up, mark the position of the hole in the polycarbonate sheet. I didn't put it in the middle, I put it off to the side because I, I assumed, maybe wrongfully, that the most deflection will be in the dead center of the hole. Uh, so I didn't wanna go drilling a wonky hole in the weak spot. My tiny drill press wouldn't reach the middle of the sheet anyway, so not a big deal. Drill the hole, then tap that hole. Yes, my tap wrench is vice grips. I got like six tap wrenches and none of them are the right size for this tap. No idea why. But wait, drill and tap, what size? Okay, take your discount gauges. See the side things attached? Take this, unscrew it. Flare fitting, that's for your hose. Take this side with the rubber seal, take that to the hardware store, see what thread that is, what size and thread. In my case, it's an M14 by 1.5. 
by that tap. They had it on the shelf, I think like metric, like, like wheel studs are that thread or something. Then by a drill, you can look up what size drill you need to drill to make that tap. In this case, it was 12 millimeter. Now my hardware store had no metric drills because obviously that's heresy. Why would they do that? So I bought the closest one they could find, which was this here. What is this? 31 64ths? It was close. It was within like two tenths of a millimeter. Close enough. That's the one step. I don't just want you to buy the thing. I want you to get the gauges, take this thing off and go find out and make sure you got the right size tap. Now take that fitting and screw it into the hole you just tapped in the polycarbonate sheet. I did not crank it down with the wrench. You're not screwing it into steel. I just finger tightened it until it got to the seal and you know, gave it a good, mm, you know, a good solid mm, with your fingers. That's all. Now I take the blue hose, screw that into the fitting that's on the, in the polycarbonate. Leave the two yellow hoses in the middle where they are, make sure they're tight, finger tight. Take the red hose that's stuck on, off the side and, and put that into the vacuum pump. Again, finger tight. You are now done. Yes, that's it. You cut a circle out of a sheet of silicone, you drilled and tapped one hole in the polycarbonate, you attach the hoses, and you now have a vacuum chamber. How's that for easy, huh? But wait, no gauge. Take a look at this one here on the left. That's the low pressure side of these gauges. Now most of that gauge is for high pressure, but at the bottom there, there's a small section which goes from zero to negative 30 uh, inches of mercury or negative one bar. It won't give you microns, but you can read like in tenths of a bar. That's not enough for like super duper scientific vacuum stuff, but it is enough to tell you if you have a vacuum and whether or not it leaks. So what I did, I, I hooked it all up, pulled down until the, the meter pegged at negative one bar, uh, turned off the pump, closed the valves, and I left. And when I came back to film this thing right here, 10 hours later, the meter was still pegged at negative one bar. Now, no vacuum setup is gonna be a perfect seal. They're all gonna leak probably eventually, but this meter doesn't read fine grainly enough for me to tell if this was leaking at all. So basically, there's no major leaks. This is gonna work perfectly fine for degassing investment plaster or silicone or whatever you wanna do in the shop. And yes, for the record, I did immediately try to boil water at room temperature. That was very easy, actually. I was surprised. Okay, so what about the lack of valves? Well, these gauges have valves. Now, it's inadvisable to just slam open a valve and let all the air gush in, because a lot of times you can, it can like rush in, hit the thing that you're working on and blow it over or whatever. With these, you can open it very slowly. So when it's all in a vacuum, I would loosen this yellow hose just a little bit that allows some air into the system because this is all connected. Then I would slowly turn this valve on. That will let you control how quickly or slowly you want air going into the chamber. It's, it's very easy. Once the pressure is equalized, lid pops right off. Now, what if you want a bigger chamber? Well, take that lid, stick it on another pot. You can get those really deep like frying pots and it'll work just fine as long as the pot's, you know, reasonably tough. Obviously 12 inches is the upper limit, 12 inch diameter but most pots aren't wider than that, even the big deep ones, because any wider than that, and they don't really fit in a standard cupboard, but still like measure first. And yes, it does fit on a five gallon bucket, but don't do that. The bucket can't handle the vacuum. Boom, big reveal. Here it is, all put together, sitting on the bench. Let's see how quickly it'll pull the vacuum all the way down to peg the meter. Okay, I apologize for the crummy camera work, but Stanley Kubrick, I am not. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, almost thirty. Is that is that negative one bar? It's kind of hard to tell with this, isn't it? And to review, I introduce a little bit of leaking by just opening that up. Then I unplug that thing. Okay, hissing done. Lifts right off. Bingo. Pressure cooker isn't damaged. My wife is none the wiser. I'll leave links down below to where you can buy this stuff if you want to just get it all on Amazon. And next time you see this, I'll probably be addressing some of the quality of life issues and just making it generally awesomer. So give this a shot and uh, don't hurt yourself. But if you do, uh, you didn't get the idea from me.